snow falling on the camera? Oh, look at this, $50,000. Right. Go and debt it up to your ears. No debt. Oh, man. Wet wood. Oh, you better work. I paid more than a dollar for this one. When all else fails, Perfect. Look at that. The roast. It's the good stuff. <laughs> the Survival Russia channel has nothing on the Blanco Lirio channel as we weather the brutal Northern California winter on our back porch with the solo stove campfire. A snow doll. <laughs> We've got an update on the snow situation in here in Northern California and the High Sierra. Northern California's first and most important reservoir, the snowpack in the Sierra. We also got an update on retirement of DWR employee, 30 year DWR employee, Frank Gerke, the guy who made snow reporting famous here in Northern California. Where should we do this? Like right here. Try it on the rail right here. I'm about two inches. About two inches? Uh -huh. <gasps> the trampoline. Let's see. Yeah. So, Julianne, do you remember the great blizzard of 09? <laughs> yeah. It was three feet tall. Three snow. feet of snow. Was it taller yeah. than you? Yes, it was. And how old are you now? Ten. Ten. And who's your friend? Sasha. Sasha. Hi, Hi. Sasha. <laughs> Two inches of snow. All right. Thanks, Julianne. Uh, we got about 20 to 24 inches of uh, new snow. Somewhere back there is all my lawn furniture. Like a marshmallow pie. <laughs> I want to see him. Baby, how much snow you got out here? 
We'll walk over there. Look how deep that is. It's as tall as you are. Yeah, look at that. It's as tall as you are. Can you hold your hand up to it? Yeah, that's as much snow as you are. Gonna measure it. How tall is that, Jenny? Thirty-six inches. Thirty-five inches. Wow. A little bit of drifting back here. Here's the barbecue. Is it snowing now? Yeah, it's snowing now. <laughs> You're not too thrilled about this. There you go. We got it. You got it. Okay, Julianne, start digging. Nope. Digging? Yeah. Can you start digging? Can you dig with that shovel? Too hard for me. <laughs> You're two years old. What do you mean? It's only three feet deep. <laughs> Can you pick it up? I can't move it. arms and legs for them. <laughs> Snow angels? <laughs> Snow angels for dolls. <laughs> and then you'll lift them up and there's an angel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's so cool. Where's your shoes, Pete? Oh no. <laughs> I can never keep shoes on that boy. Ready? Oh, that didn't last long. <laughs> so this latest series of storms have done wonders for our snowpack in the Sierra. Remember, uh, the last snow survey of around 3 January showed the snow up here locally about 60% of average. Well, these, well now we're up well over 100% of average for the snowpack right now but we got a dry spell of about 10 days coming the last 24 hours the high sierra have seen over two feet of snow over the last week the there's been over eight feet of snow fall in the sierra they've got a base at squaw valley over 12 almost 13 feet and so far for the year well over 20 maybe 22 feet of snow has fallen So with the current snowpack now over 100%, of course, this is great news for California's water supply and reservoir managers throughout the state. But it also shows you just how variable things are here in California, where just less than two weeks ago, or a little more than two weeks ago, we were looking at a 60% of average snowpack, and now all of a sudden we're cut up to over 100%. And this is one of the takeaways that Frank Gerke, the DWR Snow Survey, guy said in his uh, retirement interview is that the weather patterns in Northern California are extremely variable. If you look at the graph, the weather and the water content is just all over the map. So what did Frank Gerke do as a uh, snow surveyor? Well, <laughs> first he as a personality made snow surveying uh, famously popular here in Northern California and he openly invited and got the media involved and, and it was an annual almost monthly ritual throughout the um, winter season here for the media to follow Frank out as he trudged out into the snow and measured the snow depth and water quantity. And that was all his idea and it helped give 
a much greater understanding, overall understanding about how the water system in Northern California works. It gave a basic understanding of the most complicated water system probably in the planet, the way Northern California conveys its water from the high Sierra here in Northern California via the aqueduct system to parts of California that are very, very dry, but very highly populated like Southern California and, and the Bay Area. So how did, how did uh, Frank do his snow surveys? He took a hollow aluminum pipe, calibrated <laughs> aluminum pipe with a tear weight to it jammed it into the snow down to the base of the ground, measured the snow depth, and then took that core sample of snow inside the pipe and weighed the whole pipe minus the tear weight. And from there you could determine your water quantity. So we'd take a couple pokes around a particular spot and then folks up and down the state had designated spots where they did the same thing. So you get a couple of snow measurements uh, throughout the high Sierra to measure the snow quantity and um, water content. And this is critical information for reservoir managers to double check their flood control plan to have enough room in the reservoirs to allow for the snow runoff or melt off in the spring and not create any flooding and balance that with just topping off the reservoir for the summer. Another one of the tank takeaways that uh, Frank had on his retirement um, briefing, and I'll uh, send you the links. I'll show you, share you with you the links for for his in from his interviews. Was that the over his 30 years, he's seen the snow levels rise slightly as temperatures warm up. So the Sierra is able to hold a little bit less snow as much of the precipitation is falling in rain and often we'll get these warm rains that can melt a tremendous amount of snow quite suddenly instead of preserve it for later on in the springtime giving reservoir managers even a greater challenge so in response to this engineers are rethinking and redesigning some of the reservoirs throughout northern california here of course we did the major rebuild of oroville reservoir but Folsom Reservoir down in Sacramento has already added a second spillway. And this is a common theme I think you're going to start seeing more of. Bullard's Bar Reservoir here in Yuba County is adding a second spillway. Not only do these second spillways add redundancy to the reservoirs, but they also allow reservoir managers, floodplain managers, to more precisely control the water level in the reservoir. With a new spillway lower than the original spillway, managers are able to allow more water out sooner ahead of big storms, especially big warm storms that might be melting a lot of snow, creating more flood control space in the reservoir to prevent flooding. They're also able to fine tune that reservoir in the, by the end of the year to conserve more water to have throughout the dry summer months. Look at like Chewy. Look at Chewy. <laughs> Chewy, you like the snow? You don't really like this snow, do you? You want to be on my lap, huh? <laughs> do you want to be on my lap? Mm, you scratch my neck like that you and then I'll get on like your to lap. Be scratched. And then you know it. Oh, yeah, see, I'm trying to get up there already. Oh, you're a little bit wet. You want to come here? Oh, she's getting all wet. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, there we go. That's there, the place. Now you like the snow, huh, oh, Chewy? That's the place. <laughs> So one of the uh, other issues that Frank talked about that he was very excited about even in his retirement, and he's going to keep his hand in, is the latest technology regarding snow surveying, and that's uh, the use of an aircraft and LIDAR surveying technology. LIDAR, uh, we, light, light and detection ranging surveying method, you know PG&E was using that before they went bankrupt uh, to survey for the wires to get the trees clear the wires. Well, they're using this same technology to help with snow surveying. So they're taking a Beechcraft King Air. I think it's based out of Mammoth, California. Equipped with a LiDAR uh, device in, the, in a hole in the floor of the aircraft. 
and they have a spectrometer along with the LiDAR in the aircraft and they're able to fly over the High Sierra and do a survey of the entire area snowpack. So they've got imaging from uh, the summer when there's no snow on the ground and then they take imaging on the regular snow survey days and the light bounces off the surface of the snow and they can measure that difference in elevation between the ground and the snow and get the depth right away and then with the spectrometer on the aircraft they can determine the water quantity inside that snow depth. Now they're able to survey a huge portion or as much as they want to of the uh, Sierra Nevada instead of taking individual little snow samples here and there. So as Frank says it's like ha taking just a couple of pixels in, you, in a picture versus looking at all the pictures of the entire pic uh, pixels of the entire picture. But each flight's rather expensive almost a hundred thousand dollars. They've been at it for five years now but it looks like folks uh, in the uh, state political system are going to go ahead and approve this system as the latest technology to further refine snow surveying in the high sierra which is so critical to water managers throughout the state we'll take a look at some of the at some of these pictures of some of this equipment they're using Can't touch that, you think? Uh, it's very hot. it's hot i wouldn't recommend it that's what these are for because I'm too lazy to cut these into little blocks. That one might break off soon, too. Yep. Yep. Great little fire. Yeah. I can feel that heat. From mm -hmm. Here's the LiDAR equipped King Air flown by NASA crews out of Mammoth Airport, California. The interior of the aircraft with the LiDAR camera mounted in the belly and the two observers monitor panels and a spectrometer in the aircraft as well to measure water content and the LiDAR compares data between bare ground and snow-covered ground to determine the snow depth. So far, flights have been concentrating on the central Sierra near the Tuolumne River Basin. The individual dots on the map represent manual snow surveys versus the LiDAR in the blue mapping the entire area. Once they get funding approved, they'll be able to cover the entire Sierra Nevada, and I think will be money well spent. And regarding that Bullard's Bar Spillway edition, uh, look forward to a lot of updates on that. I'll be covering that spillway construction project as it's very close to home here uh, every step of the way. And I still have yet to put together my first visit to Bullard's Bar where I got the grand tour of the entire facility from the folks at the Yuba Water Agency, so stay tuned for that. Yeah, we should try to cook something on here now. You want to cook something on there, Jenny? <laughs> it's, yeah. It works. I've done it before. <sighs> so as long as you have some good embers in there, right? Yeah. So this is why we like snowfall here in Northern California, because it doesn't stick around very long, and that's part of the problem, too. This snow will be gone. By the end of the day. By the end of the day. Yeah. By the end of the now that the sun's out, it's going to be <laughs> melting fast. <laughs> That's right. Our boat is ready. Ready to go. Okay. Trailer it out. It's I'll Scott's start Latin. shoveling. <laughs> Get it in the sun, it'll melt up.
So Jenny's back from Spain. How was your trip, love? Oh, back from Spain. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was great. There's so many of us there. We've never done it before. There were 13 of us family members, plus uh, usually two, three, four, or five add-ons. So we ended up being as many as 17 at, at least one dinner party. <laughs> yeah, the whole family there. Of course, I had to work. Yeah. yeah. We missed you. Mm-hmm. We missed you. Of course. We went to lots of places. Yeah. Lots of unusual places that most people probably wouldn't go to on a trip to. Because that's where your your that's your hometown, Loret de Mar, right? I mean, that's where you grew up. I was up. raised on the Costa Brava, yeah. between uh, between Barcelona and Loret, which is uh, it's that coastline between Barcelona and, and France, southern France. And that was from one year old all the way through high school, right? Three years old through three years of high school. We three moved years. there when I was about three, and yeah. uh, I lived there until my third year in high school, completed. So, what's your first language? English. Are you sure? <laughs> English. Uh, uh, how do you say this? English? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, sometimes. And then is it Castilian Spanish or Catalan is your... Castilian Spanish. Next. Uh, Catalan was always there as well. It was right. never my primary language, but it was always there. Because uh, about the time I was in the third grade, Catalan just started coming back. That's right, because Franco, Franco squashed it, huh? Yeah. yeah, the regime, the Franco regime squashed all languages other you than You were Spanish. there at the end of his regime? Yeah. Number three? Wow. Yeah, I think we, we moved there in about 73 or 74. Yeah. And he died in 76. Yeah. 1975 yeah. or 1976 he died, which effectively ended the Franco regime. And then uh, the monarchy was reinstated, mm -hmm. as per his own wishes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how's Spain today? Are they still suffering from the great crisis, the Great Recession of 2008? Yeah, the recession is running still pretty deep in Spain. What's unemployment um, like amongst young Spaniards? Would you it's, guess? it's very high. It's probably something like 25 percent. I don't know the exact numbers, but it's yeah. it's it's not good. Mm -hmm. And people are regretting the fact that, young people are regretting the fact that a university degree has been so heavily pushed upon them. Yeah. If you get a university degree, you're guaranteed to get work. And they're coming out, they're not finding work, and they are they're changing their CV, they're changing their resume, deleting items so they don't look overqualified for certain really? jobs. Really? So they can get them, yeah. Wow! Yeah, because if you're overqualified, you're probably going to get, <laughs> hmm. uh, you know, passed off and the, the next guy's going to get hired who's uh -huh. perhaps wow. less, you know, less educated and maybe more qualified for the job. Interesting. But, yeah, yeah, that area does have has the uh, the beauty, the weather, the history, the culture, the food. Oh, the food and the food and the, the food. Kinds of things that people want yeah. when they either are on vacation or when they retire. A lot mm -hmm. of people who live in the countries that are further north that have terrible weather most of the time are happy to retire, even if it's just part time, to a place on the coast in Spain on the Mediterranean where. Mm -hmm. You know, in the dead of winter, you might have a beautiful sunny day. It's warm out. You can take your jackets off, be in a t-shirt. And it might cool off later, but it's sunny, kind of like here in California. So, uh, you're the reason this channel is called Blanco Lirio, <laughs> right? What's the, yeah, what's the bit, story? <laughs> it's a bit of a fluke. <laughs> <laughs> but the rest is history now. It's too late to change it. <laughs> oh, well. Uh, it's just a... Uh, it started out as your channel. It was your channel. I posted yeah, a few videos on it. Yeah, it wasn't on. really even a channel. Um, I think at some point back in uh, <laughs> 05, or I don't know. In order to... When, when YouTube first came along, I had heard about it. Hey, have you seen these videos on YouTube? YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. I thought, what is this YouTube? So I finally went on YouTube, and it was probably about 2005. And I guess I had to create some sort of an online a login. Mm-hmm. And I had I had previously had an old email address <laughs> that was a Spanish. It was also a flower. That's mm -hmm. blanco lirio means white lily right. or lily white. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so pure. And before that, I had had an email that was rojo clavel. Oh really? Red carnation or ah, really carnation red, sort uh -huh. of backwards. How do you carnation. say that again? Rojo clavel. Ah. And it, because I had had that silly email address that I wasn't even using anymore, I just said, well, what? 
Can my login be, I don't know, a color and a flower? Okay. Blanco Lidio. That's it. That's how it all, that's how it actually happens. Well, it's certainly unique because there's not another channel out there that's even got a name close to Blanco Lidio. <laughs> Nobody can understand what that means or where it came from, but now you know. <laughs> Thanks, love. But people seem to remember it, so that's good, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's right. The rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> and it say. starts with a B, like brown. Yeah, like yeah. Like B for brown and Blanco Lidio. No, it doesn't like Boston. Be brown, but. <laughs>